Today we're going to be giving a brief setup guide and review of the Synology DS423 Plus network attached storage system from the perspective of a DIYer like myself. I'll be using this NAS for my tier one data storage solution as well as for a Plex media server. This Synology NAS will be backed up locally with my recent Unraid server build as well as offsite with another lower tier NAS. To get the system running, we'll be starting off with two 8TB hard drives, one of which is a new Seagate Red, and the other will be shucked from a Western Digital external hard drive. The drives were super easy to install in the NAS with these plastic hot swap caddies. As a caveat here, I ended up replacing the shuck drive in my array weeks later and installed it in my Unraid backup system. There isn't anything wrong with running these drives, however, I wanted to use a more robust drive in my main NAS. One nice thing about the plastic drive caddies is that they have little rubber mounting rings, which I believe reduce the noise of the drives while running. Basically, you won't get as much rattling. As you can see, installing the drives is super easy, and once you're done, you can power on the system. Make sure to have your NAS connected to your local network via an Ethernet cable, then type in find.synology.com in your web browser. Your NAS should then pop up as found, and you can click the connect button. The first thing you'll be asked about is updating the DSM operating system to the most current version, which obviously you will want to do. Side note here, the easy plug and play nature of the DSM operating system and the Synology SHR RAID were two of the main reasons I purchased this NAS. Once your DSM is set up, you'll have the opportunity to create a device name and main admin account. Note that there will also be a default admin account set up automatically, so don't do what I did here and just go ahead and set up your main user account. For instance, I went back and changed my name of this account to James. When you get in for the first time, you'll see an option to create a storage pool and volume. For my NAS, I'm going to be using Synology's SHR RAID, which based on the research I've done is the most flexible for a home user, especially if you want to add more drives in the future. Note you'll get a warning message like I just did if you're using drives that aren't on Synology's compatibility list. I selected to create this volume with the max amount of available hard drive space and use the BTRFS file system. After that, all you have to do is wait a day or two to get the storage pool built. With the storage pool built, I'm going to go through a quick example of how to add a shared drive that can be accessed by a Windows PC. Head on over to the control panel, select shared folder, and select create a shared folder. Then you can give it a name, point it to a volume you'd like to utilize, encrypt it if you want, skip some advanced settings, and bam, there you go, you have a shared folder. Last thing we do here before we can move on is updating the permissions of this shared drive. If you have multiple users, this is how you give some of those users read only or read write access. With the shared folder created, you can now use the Synology Assistant application, which can be downloaded from Synology's website to find it. In my case, it wasn't picking it up on my NAS, so I'll be showing an alternate method. Go to Windows File Explorer, right click on this PC, and select Map Network Drive. Under the folder text box, enter a backslash backslash, then your NAS's IP address, which is the same that's on your browser's URL, and then another backslash in the name of your shared drive. Once this step is complete, you'll have a mounted shared drive that you can interact with just like any of the other folders on your machine. Next up, we'll install Plex on the NAS. You can find it in the package center and hit the install button. Before launching it, I changed the permissions on my media folder so that Plex has read and write access. When you launch Plex, you can name your machine and then add a library. It's as easy as navigating to volume one and adding the folders you want. One cool thing about Plex is that you can tell it the folder contains movies and it will go and find the cover art and metadata to display with the file on the user interface. When you're done, you can install Plex on your devices and stream movies right from your own Synology server. I can say that the DS423 Plus with the integrated graphics on the Intel processor has been doing a great job for us streaming 4K movies. In the next section, I'm going to be swapping out the shucked 8TB drive and replacing it with an HGST Ulcerstar. I'll leave a link to this drive as well as some of the other products I used in the video in the description below. The first step is to right click on the drive you want to replace and then select Deactivate Drive. Then with the system running, you can remove the deactivated drive and replace it with the new drive.
Give it a few minutes and DSM will then pick up the new drive. You'll then navigate to the storage pool, click on the triple ellipses at the top right menu, select repair, select the new drive you just inserted, and finally hit next, continue, apply, and okay. This will take some time to rebuild the pool. While this is going on, you can mute the beeping sound by going into the control panel, going to the hardware and power section, and then muting the current beep. Lastly, I wanted to point out that an integral part of your data storage is a battery backup. It seems like a large portion of the data corruption issues I've heard of happens when there is a power outage. I picked up this little UPS on Amazon and it's been doing a great job. You can connect it to your NAS via USB and adjust settings in the control panel to have the NAS turn off in a controlled way when you've been running on the battery for a set amount of time. I really hope you all have enjoyed this brief run through of the Synology DS423 Plus from a practical user's perspective. We only scratched the surface here, but I hope that this video could show off some of the basic use cases for a consumer grade network attached storage device. If you got something out of this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button down below. I'll also do my best to answer any questions in the comment section. Until the next time, this is Redbeard Engineered, signing off.